Hi, this is Aaron Tibetter, author of Nature of the Mind. Today we're going to go hiking up Dry Canyon, and we're also going to learn about the subconscious state of mind. Many of you have heard the phrase, the mind is like a stage. I like to be more specific and say that the, the mind is like a play. The conscious state of mind is like the stage. Only one action happens at a time on the stage. Just with the conscious state of mind, only one thing can happen with the conscious state of mind. Well, I'm getting out of breath. <clears throat> but the subconscious state of mind is behind the stage. Everything that goes on behind there. And basically, the subconscious state of mind can multitask. Even though, even though nobody can see what's going on behind the stage, there are many things, that, many things that are going on. The subconscious state of mind and the conscious state of mind have a very unique relationship. The conscious state of mind is very intelligent but very lazy. The subconscious state of mind is very stupid but hard working. When they get th together, they are a great combination. The conscious state of mind, they, it loads all of its work on the subconscious state of mind. And the, the subconscious state of mind loves it because the subconscious doesn't have to make any decisions. It's all predetermined. The conscious state of mind communicates with the subconscious state of mind through repetitive decision making. The conscious state of mind makes a decision over and over again until it becomes lazy enough to hand it over to the subconscious state of mind. The best example to explain the relationship between the subconscious and the conscious state of mind is driving a car. Many people, including truck drivers, will drive from point A to point B without even thinking about it. They're using their subconscious state of mind. In fact, they may become so proficient at driving that they will not remember driving maybe from home to work. The question is, how does this happen? How does, this, how does somebody create this in their life? When learning how to drive a car, your parents will teach you, for example, to stop at a stop sign. So one day, you actually you get in your car, you, make the, you come to a stop sign, and you make the decision consciously to stop. After some time, you've made that decision so many times that one day you come to a stop sign without even thinking about it and you stop. It's because of repetitive decision making the subconscious mind takes over and makes that decision for you. The only problem with this is what happens when you go from point A to point B and you don't remember what you've seen or what has happened do you pass by the girl of your dreams or the guy of your dreams? Do you pass by the opportunity to get the job that you've been looking for? Do you pass by that opportunity for success? What can you do to prevent yourself from passing these things? To program the subconscious state of mind yourself, what you got to do is four steps. Let's start with the first step. Deciding what you want. If you don't decide what you want, you're just not going to get, get it. And a lot of people, instead of des deciding what they want and focusing on what they want, they often focus on what they don't want. They focus on not getting the job or the girl or the, the opportunity that they're looking for. Now that you've envisioned that perfect job, which is the first step, now you need to imagine an opportunity to get that you can get that job. For example, maybe you run into um, somebody in the company that is higher up and can get you connected to the company. Envision different opportunities. So then when your subconscious has seen this, well, you, you've made this decision and envision it so many times through repetitive decision making, then your subconscious will be able to see it even when it's going from point A to point B. Now that you have envisioned seeing this opportunity, now you need to take the third step, 
which is envision acting on this opportunity. If you don't do the third step, you will go from point A to point B, see your opportunity for success, and pass right by it. The third step is very important. If you're looking for the perfect job, envision what you will say and what you will do to make this a successful conversation. The fourth step is, of course, write down what you want, what, your, what it will look like, and how you're going to act on it. And, of course, tell your friends as well. If you do these things, you will be able to have success even when you're going from point A to point B, and your subconscious will be able to see what you want, it'll act on what you want to do, and then, of course, you'll be able to have success and get what you want. This was a lesson from Aaron Tavetter, author of Nature of the Mind. I hope you enjoyed your trip through Dry Canyon.